If I were to make a play of words, I could say it's not merely an assumption that Mary's assumption into heaven, body and soul, but it's a fact. It's something we believed and it's something as Christians we believed for a long time. Even though the proclaimed dogma itself is, is fairly recent. The history of, of our church goes way back to, to Mary being assumed into heaven or, or maybe in earlier ways of speaking about it was the Dormition of Mary. Mary falling asleep. And in church art and architecture, that goes way back many centuries, that's portrayed time and time again. And I think in many ways it was used, this, this understanding of the dermission of Mary, falling asleep into the hands of, of God, being raised body and soul into heaven. Help the people, especially in the times of so much pain, suffering, the times of the plague, the times of so much death. Help them to help Christians understand as well their own destiny, our own destiny. What we hear proclaimed in that, that second reading, that Jesus Christ, the first fruits, has been raised from the dead. And celebrating that victory that Christ has over death. And the first one to, to truly celebrate or be part of that victory of Christ is our mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the mother of the church. So again, throughout her life, Mary did not obviously assume things. She was the one that believed, as Elizabeth said to her, that the words of God to her, the promises of God to her would be fulfilled. She was one that shows us how to live that faith. I think too often today the the idea of everlasting life. Sometimes that idea of faith can be something that people at times can say, well, it just might be the best bet. It might be the best thing to do. I'm really not sure what everlasting life is like if there's life after death. But I'll just act as if it were true. Mary shows us how to differ from that. That everlasting life, our destiny, the fact that Christ has destroyed sin and death completely, and even though it is being played out in our history, that that is not an assumption that we make, but yet is a fact that we live. It's something that we're convinced as Mary was, that her son that she gives to the world has won that victory. But we, like her, must live in that conviction. We, like her, must live in that faith. We, like her, must be ready to, to go in haste, and to bring that message, that bring that presence of Christ to others. So today as we celebrate this fact of our faith, Mary being assumed body and soul into heaven, sharing the, her son's victory, let us live with conviction that promise to us that Christ has destroyed the power of death, that we ourselves may live in that victory, that we ourselves may live in that faith, that we ourselves may live in that assurance of Christ's presence, of Christ's victory over sin and death, as we continue in our lives to struggle, yes, with sin, but allowing God's grace and cooperating with that grace to live in that, in that freedom from sin, to live in that freedom to love, to give our lives completely to him as Mary did. And so let us also ask for Mary's intercession. Because as the mother of the church where is she today? She's praying for us. She's supporting us, and she's re there ready to welcome us when the day of our own death comes. So as we live faithfully to Christ in this life, we may be received into his glory.